Hey everybody, I am Blitz, and I'm here with the inaugural, inaugural video, well that's hard to say, inaugural, oh I can't even do it. Uh, I'm here with the first video of Dwarf Fortress, of the playthrough that um, I'll be doing. Um, first off, you can see here, I will be running the Lazy Noob Pack, actually I'm using, a, oh, how do you pronounce it, Paradexus Surround, I'll be using his uh, starter pack basically, they have a bunch of utilities, in here, I'm going to be using Legends Viewer that I actually have up, and I'll pull that over here on this screen so you can see it. Uh, I've already preloaded a world, and uh, you can see what it looks like. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, okay, continue. Thank you. I've preloaded a world, and we're going to be going building into a mountainside. That's actually awesome. I haven't looked at this all the way. That's really cool. Um, so we'll pull up that a little bit later after I pick the site. And I have to say, um, I'm using a screen capture program instead of my typical recording software, so things might be a little different, sound might be a little bit different. I'm trying to do the best I can with it, but uh, I'm doing all I can. And I will be using the Phobius uh, graphics pack as well. Um, that's the one I currently have enabled. Um, I'm going to start the game off basically with these specific parameters. No aquifers, yes invaders, cavens, no. Uh, temperature and weather, we may do that. But what I have planned is kind of cool. Uh, I plan on doing this. Uh, not that one. <laughs> you can't see it anyway. This right here. Ta-da! These are an artist rendition of the Mines of Moria from Lord of the Rings or from Tolkien's work specifically. Um, and there are um, a couple of people through Reddit and through the forums have gone through and made blueprints and I could actually pull them up. I'll pull it up in here so you can see. This is the 4x4 four four, uh, blueprint um, for a 4x4 four four in bark. That is the main hall and there's a whole bunch of things that just cover up on top of each other to make it a 4x4 four four in bark. I, well, <laughs> that gets really, really cluttered. Um, so I can kind of walk you through the layers of this. Um, these are just the the never-ending staircase. So the first layer, oh, why did I enable them all? Sorry. Sorry. Okay, let's disable them all. The, they kind of go down in order on each layer. It's not really optimized for Dwarf Fortress play. Um, so what I'm going to be doing, instead of directly using these blueprints, I'm going to be using them as like a template. So there's the main entrance here. Uh, this would be meant to be outside, and then this is like a a channel. The brown down area area is a, a channel, and then this is the main hall. So if you remember in watching Fellowship of the Ring, when um, the entire uh, I guess Fellowship was running through the mines, and they got towards the end, and the Belrog came up and scared all the goblins away. This is where that big room was essentially. And they ran across this bridge. This is, uh, I believe it's Durin's bridge. And Gandalf fell down there with the Balrog. And he went down and killed him. Um, and after that, uh, he went up the never-ending staircase or the endless stairs. And you can actually see these, this brown arrow area, is still the downward spiral or the downward channel, I guess. A big hole on both sides of the... Um, bridge and it goes all the way down this is 18 levels down from the bridge so that'd be kind of cool uh, it's not really to scale though in a door fortress sort of sense so what I will be doing is I'll be doing these and I probably will pull on some of these layers because going through and digging this out on my own uh, pixel by pixel would take a very long time but I do want to scale up some of these other floors like oh like that one uh, this is just like basically caving into the caverns. That's how I look at it. Uh, this would just be like the cavern level here. And then there's different industries out here. There's no real reason for us to dig out caverns and the spider webs. If we look back on this map, um, that's kind of what's going on here. So the endless stair is this thing that we looked at. The east gate, we looked at that too, uh, with the big channel down here on Durin's bridge. Uh, these, these rifts, so like the eastern rift there and the the great abyss, yeah abyss, uh, I'll be digging those out on, I guess my dwarves will be digging those out, so Durin's bridge, you see the big pillars there going into the big room, that's what we're going to be doing, and this doesn't have it, um, this doesn't really have it like that, 
So we're gonna be doing multiple layers, multiple levels, instead of just the one level per layer. And I really like like that setup. That's pretty efficient for door fortress. You have your workshops on the outside and your stockpiles in the middle. That's pretty good. Um, and I do wanna say that I'm not the best door fortress player. I've played uh, about a handful of successful, I guess, successful in door fortress terms. Uh, I've never breached the circus. We will be doing that in this playthrough. And I actually want to have this playthrough go 1,000 years. Uh, I've I've seen people try to do it. I don't know if we'll actually make that or not. But uh, yeah, we're going to try it. So um, without further ado, I guess let's uh, start up Door Fortress. I think I've got all of the basics covered. And I'm going to pull this over so you can see the intro splash screen. For those of you who have not seen it. Uh, like the game, you guys probably know the game is very basic. Uh, it's all ASCII text in the in the regular sense of the term. Uh, ASCII. I'm going to turn down that a little bit. I love that intro. And I do have quick fort on. I should really get rid of that. Um, I forget what the actual... Uh, I forget what the actual... I think it's Alt H. Yeah, Alt H gets rid of that. So uh, what we're gonna do, and I, I went through, and I'll show you my the parameters I ran, and I haven't quite picked out an area yet uh, to go, but I did a large world. Uh, history was medium, number of civilizations medium, and I went uh, high beasts, high savagery, and frequent mineral occurrence. That's what I did to generate the world, and I got some pretty cool ones. Um, if I go, this is region three is what we're gonna go with, and that's what I already did with the Legends mode. I've exported all of that out, so you guys can see that. And this will take just a little bit of time to get going. Here we are, here is the world. <laughs> so you guys have probably seen this, some of you have seen it. It's a lot to take in. Um, the far left side is the local map. Well, let's go with the big one. The big one's the world, so that's essentially the Legends map. Oh, go away. It's, go away. <laughs> I'm scrolling the mouse wheel. Um, this is about the same as the other one. So, the same generalized world. That's what's going on with it. And, yeah. So that's a, I guess, a heat map of it. It's under the elevation. And I can go in and look at all the historical figures and everything. We'll do that later. Every time we get somebody coming in, we'll look up their history. If we capture them, we can see kind of what they do. Uh, that sort of thing. That's really cool to do. I love doing that. But right now we have this uh, the sprite table. And I'm actually going to go find a desire location because there's a few that I've found. Um, I think it was on this side of this mountain somewhere. Uh, I'm going to do a 5x5 five five embark as well. So it's a 5x5 five five, which is like 200 and was it 240? 48 times 5 is 240. Yeah. Uh, 240 blocks by 240 blocks. It's a fairly large embark. Um, I don't remember exactly where this thing was, so let's uh, find a desired location. You can see on the the far right, we have X, Y, and Z directions up here. Savagery, I don't care about elevation. We're going to look at that individually. Uh, I do not want an aquifer just to make sure. River, I don't really care. Shallow metal, Preferably deep metal, preferably soil. We want, well, I don't care if we have a little or none because we're going to be going in a mountain or on the side of a mountain. We're going to actually embark on the, the plains on the side, and I don't really care about clay. So I'm going to do this search, and I'll probably do a time lapse of this as it is searching because it'll take quite a while. See, it's popping up here, flashing. Oh, I messed something up, I think, because everything's coming in green. And it'd be very, very hard to embark on an ocean. Let's cancel that. What did I do wrong? Savagery elevation. I guess there is area. There are areas here. Uh, maybe that's all right. Fluxstone. Oh, I want a fluxstone too. That's what I wanted. So, uh, fluxstone. Yes. And now it'll search. Now this should be a little better. Here we go. So you can see there the red X's are places we cannot go. So I'm going to time lapse this and we'll be back shortly.
Alrighty guys, we are back. We are ready to go. I hope you enjoyed that little time lapse. Uh, not much to it other than a bunch of pixels going... Anyway, uh, here we are. Um, this is all of the reels. These are all of the results. That's better English. Uh, so we can hit enter to or escape to browse results, and then we can scroll around here. So we have the Arctic Ocean that's freezing. That's where we. That's where the first one is. If I hit tab, uh, no. Which one do I want? Oh, it is that one I want to see. Wow, that is the terribliest, ugliest map. Um, anyway, so let's get down here into some real, some real areas. Uh, shift. We want to go somewhere close to a mountain, like here. You can see in the middle screen, in here, we are in a mountain. So we, we are in a temperate, with no trees, and untamed wilds. This is actually pretty good. Um, we are doing that 5x5 five five embark, so if I hit M to go down and across, that is actually a pretty good area right there. Um, brook, shallow metals, deep metals, nah, maybe not. Um, I don't know, we can keep looking, uh, we can make a note there, or we can just keep scrolling around. This might be better here. Eh? Tree, none, shallow, deep metals, flux stone. This does have soil over here. That is actually a really good spot. Um, moderate vegetation on the mountain itself. The trees are none, but that's only in the main area here, hopefully. Now, probably there are some trees in these plains. Actually, let's look at this a little bit. I'm going to keep these in mind because these are pretty good spots. Uh, if we go around, look at this map like here, see this uh, this red area up here? If I scroll over to that one using my arrow keys, um, I can mouse over it. And that's a volcano, I believe. Yes, there is a volcano, the Windy Volcano. And you can, that's a pretty, pretty good area to embark in. If we went to that volcano itself, uh, we could have the volcano within the embark and have magma right away. Um, we're probably not going to do, I don't want to do a magma or a, a volcano embark. It's fun, but they're not uh, that great for for YouTube all the time. Uh, so there's some other things here, like uh, this is like a necromancer tower. There's cities, if we go down to here, um, we can see we're in a mountain now here, and we can go over here, and we're in like a uh, rocky wasteland biome. Um, come down here, here's a, a haunted, the area is haunted, uh, things come back to life, that sort of stuff. There's necromancers around. I think this is a necromancer tower. Uh, I'm not positive on that. I have not embarked with one. And then here's like a s something else, like a city of some sort. We could look up whatever the Nugrithrizen. Nugrithrizen? We could look up what that is in the Legends viewer. But frankly, I don't really care to do that right now. So we're not going to. Uh, here's another haunted forest down here. Haunted mountain, I guess. That's kind of cool. And is this a town or a city? Yeah, there's a city here. If we scroll over to that. So you can do all sorts of things. So let's go back up to that area I found. Actually, that seems like a good one for what we're going to do. Um, where was that now? Oh, we're too high. And it was over to the left. West, I guess. And is it one more up over? Yes, it was right in here. That's where we were going. Go over and ta-da, that is our area we are going to embark in. The Scad Crawled the Skull of Goads. That is the name. <laughs> Scad Crawled the Skull of Goads. That's the name of the brook that runs through. So there is a little bit of water. If I hit tab, uh, let's actually look. So the goblins are at war with us. We can get in touch with the, the dwarves, elves, and humans. I believe that means war. That's fine. Goblins, I don't care. Uh, the worthy sacks. We can pick a different one. Uh, oops. Uh, I always get my arrow keys confused a little bit. Uh, I forget how to actually change that. There it is. Plus and minus. So we could do the, the Pulley of Loving, the Canyon of Cyclones, the Clean Tombs, Arch of Saving. That sounds good. Or the Shields of Liberation. That's pretty good, too. The Shields of Liberation. That would be our civilization name. Or the Furious Paints. Or the Carnal Paint. Or the Sax Floor of Urges, Corridor of Order. I like the Shields of Liberation. That sounds cool. Uh, so Elevation. Uh, this is actually pretty good. Um, we can go to this one too. 
you can see, actually this might not be good. There's no real way to get in, or is there? So like here, um, this would be a cliff, because this is four high and that's a zero. Uh, goes from zero to eight, that's about a sheer mountain. Here's where that brook is through there. I don't really like that. Um, yeah, that that's a little bit too mountainous crazy for me. Actually, that might be a really good area to enter have our fortress enter right there. And there's the... So this is the plains, I'm assuming. And then we have a mountain range that comes up over here. And it's a peak right here. Let's keep looking at this stuff. Um, so that's the levels up. The only way to get up to this point is through here. We have an eight and a nine. That'd be a great place for the the grand staircase because it goes from the bottom of the world all the way to the top. That's what uh, it is said to be. So we're gonna keep an eye on this one. Let's look around a little bit more and I may do a cut here. All right guys, I'm pretty much gonna decide on this area right here. There are three areas of the Horns of Dividing. So it's a, there's a momentous patron. There are three areas, I believe this is a uh, freshwater swamp. <laughs> yes, it is. And I'm going to go back one more over. So that's a freshwater sh sh swamp. There should be some soil in there that we can build farms on without having to make um, like muddy stuff, muddy soil. And I think we're going to go with that. So let's embark. You selected a large area. Actually, uh, this map, where is it? This map right here. The, the blueprints for this are a 12 by 7 in bark, which are just crazy high. Um, for me, I, my computer while recording wouldn't be able to take care of it. A 5 by 5 might be pushing it. I've done 5 by 5s in the past, but uh, it's in bark. So, what I like to do is I like to use the DF Vid Toots 2012. Now, this is version, Door Fortress version 2012. Um, I will be. Um, using that all the way through. I know there is a thing here in the future coming up, an update coming up in the future, and we're gonna we're going to kind of update this on our own. So there are our seven miners that we get in, or seven people. Uh, this first one is proficient miner. A he's a negotiator, judge of intent, appraiser, uh, conversationalist. So this is basically our our man. He's the the leader, um, and we'll let him be. Uh, next up, we have our mechanic miner. He is going to do a mechanic work and mining work. Mechanic is good for building other things. Um, and I'm not going to give him additional points because I don't need to. We have a stone crafter and a mason. I'm going to get rid of the stone crafter and I'm going to put a couple points into engraving just for the sake of uh, we're going to do a lot of engraving in this. And it's always nice to have somebody being an engraver. Next up on the list is the carpenter building designer and I'm gonna get rid of all of these crafter stuff because um, well you always get crafters on immigration waves I guess that's the best oh we're gonna keep um, butcher and tanner we're gonna keep seven, two, seven points or two additional points into there and building designer he still has one in there carpenter we're gonna give him a 10 in carpentry 10 in carpentry all right next up on the list is our grower. Um, I'm going to keep a grower six herbalist. We're going to bring up to ten. We're going to bring this down to six. We're going to go up to ten in herbalism. Uh, the more points you have in herbalism, the more, the better chance they get to collect herbs and other stuff. Brewer and cook will be just fine at sevens. And I think that's it for him. Next up is our woodcutter. Our woodcutter is going to get a six. He's going to be a nine in X-Men. So he's going to be basically our first up on the list of uh, militia. He's going to be our first X-Men. Not a fighter. He's got dodge. He's got and leadership skills. The next guy is our observer, teacher, dodger. And uh, he will keep the hunting down. So he's going to be an ambusher crossbowman. So he will hunt when he has it. So let's go to items. Take a peek at the items. Take a peek at the items. Two picks, one anvil, crossbow, quiver, bolts, uh, Training axe is training axe. Tower cap is a mushroom. Mushroom training axe to cut down trees is what we're using it for. Um, he'll be that'll be given to our axe men. 
and um, let's see I need to get over here and make my list visible I want to go do the animals first so animals over here on the right screen we're going to do three dogs no hunting dog uh, no hunting dog there one of each cat and I want to do three ewes uh, three ewes one ram no hens no roosters no ducks no drakes drake is a female or a male duck we're going to do five turkey hens five turkey hens all oh, right so that will be the animals we, we will get two additional animals uh, with it the dogs are good for hunting and war the one male will breed with all of the females i hope i did that right I don't I always get these two confused whatever the male and the female are I don't know for sure um, and let's see down here Dorvin rum ale sand um, sand is good to have just in case you get a mood where they can um, become pests and demand that you give them stuff like that to make a, a sand something out of um, let's go with up to 11 on the wine and the additional this is kind of a trick in the game if you go up to like a six or a five you get an additional sack with these or a bag with these and you have the um, the dog meat and stuff you get you get bags with these things and the more bags you have the better it is because you don't have to make them you don't have to embark with them either i'm not sure why these have the embark on them we'll get rid of those we have 39 remaining points down there you can see our points uh what else do i have on the list um sand Sand should be good. Uh, dimple cup spawn. Let's bring these up to seven. And these are the food, the plants. Uh, plant helmet spawn. We'll bring that to eleven. Bring an additional bag. I think uh, twenty points left. We're gonna get some more milk. Um, let's do up to six. And a few of these. We get an additional bag here and here and here I don't know why we have more cow milk but that should be it I hope I'm not forgetting anything because here we go I hit embark and this should do it you have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding forbidding wilderness beyond your harsh trek has finally ended your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Saddle Umtal uh, there is almost no supplies left, but within with stout labor comes sustenance, whether it be by bolt, plow, or hook. Provide your dwarves. Provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve into secure lodgings. And there are alligators. Get hungry, nice. Their new chapter in dwarven history begins here at this place. No send. Rest calm, strike the earth. Good, let's go. Let's see what we get. We have an understanding of what happened. We can actually open up the, the Legends mode and take a peek here. Uh, we'll do that in a little bit. It takes quite a long time to load up. Uh, that uh, time lapse that I did was actually six minutes or seven minutes worth of video all cut down into like one minute or 30 seconds of it going. So it does take a long time to really load all of the stuff and go with it. Here we are. All right, so this is what we have. This is the world we're gonna hit space to pause it. I'm going to hit tab to get rid of that side, tab twice, and here's our world. So let's explore a little bit. This is a huge flat area. That's really cool. Uh, let's see what the rock type is. Is a claystone. Okay, claystone is just a, a derpy rock, nothing special about it. Uh, down a layer is uh, the less greater than sign, and we have shrubs. Um, that shrub should have dense common reed so there's some good stuff here shrubs um, there are some ponds too ponds are sweet uh, and this what is this this is claystone uh oh it might not have soil we may have to drain one of these down below ground to get um, some water down there uh, dwarves drink alcohol almost specifically specifically yellow sand so we do have sand uh, lignite lignite's a coal that's awesome 
And what is this rock clay stone? And over here we have jet. Jet is a solid rock, so that's cool too. So we're gonna have to pick a place. This is actually a really good, I wanna do like three wide. This might be a really good entrance area here. Right, it's close to where we embarked originally. Uh, I don't know where the alligators we can actually hit uh, you to see if there's anything. We have three uh, marmot. <laughs> I think they're fine. Pets, livestock, so that's all the stuff that we have. And carpenters, so the hunter is already going hunting for the marmot. He knows that he is a hunter. Expedition leader, uh, carpenter masons, good, good, good. Um, so let's take a little more look, see around, see. Um, yeah. This is a pretty good area. I like the flat areas more than the other areas. I think this goes way up too. It does. So that goes way up. Three, four, five, six. So it's fairly flat, fairly good. But we are gonna go in right here. This is where we are gonna start digging. D is to mine. And we're gonna go with it. So I want to do a little entrance, uh, much like, uh, where are you? Is it this one? No. This one. I want to do an entrance. Basically, I want to have the frontal area here be for trade goods, and then a one wide path going back into a big area. So let's build like a, a little bit in. Um, then we'll build a room inside here. We'll go one in like that, and we have a large area behind it to go to. And we're going to do a 5x5 five five here. So that would be this, that, and then that. That will be, that's not five by five, that is. So our diggers will get to that. And I'm gonna set um, some other guys to do some tree chopping. So designate, and then T is for tree. And we can do this, uh, select the area where, in which we want the trees to be chopped. And we're gonna gather plants too. So P for plant gathering, good, good, good. And down. We'll do it in that same general area. Let's set up some stockpiles. P for stockpile. And where are we going? What do we want? Food? We want wood stockpile. That'll get the rest of the guys who aren't doing anything to put the wood in there. And I should do a food stockpile too. Just a, a general food stockpile. Um, P. Oops. I do. I don't know what I did. Okay, that's the uh, brackets. Sorry if I messed with your brains. I messed with mine too, food. All right, so that'll be just our two basic stockpiles for right now. Uh, they're gonna put everything in there and I will open up, I have, I think it's not that one. Do I have it open? I don't have it open. So uh, let's open up Dwarf Therapist. We are going to run Dwarf Therapist. Where are you? There it is. Duh. I had it open full screen on my other screen. So these are our seven people. Let's pause it now. And I lost it again. Here it is. Um, these are our people. Uh, these are the different things that they are enabled to do. So we have our two miners. Zoglar. Zoglar is our miner. Uh, we have our carpenter. We're going to have set up carpentry probably in the beginning of next episode. And we have this guy out doing his uh, wood cutting. We'll set up a little ragtag operation for him as well. So guys, I'm going to leave you with that for today. Next episode, I'm going to, probably a little bit off camera, uh, get a little bit more mined out, dug out, whoops, uh, mined out and dug out in here, and then probably get some more stuff ready for our, our uh, dwarves to go. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for the support on this episode. Uh, I know this one was a little bit of uh, laid back, relaxed, but in the future here we're going to get uh, pretty hardcore into the game, I hope. Uh, quite a few fun things can happen. Fun things can happen. And I'm actually going to do this. Remove ramps. Stairs and ramps. We're going to get rid of that through here. So I don't want people coming into my area. So guys, as always, Keep your stick on the ice. We'll get you.